on hey. Tinternet. On Tinternet. We're live on Tinternet because... Uh, oh, one thing we found is that the, uh, the buttons bleed. So, uh, Kat talked me out of doing track and field. Can you believe it? I would have taught you out yeah. on the ground, but... Slamming, uh, the fact that he would beat your ass at it because exactly. he's really good. I was actually going to suggest that. Hey, I'd take part. I'd be okay with that because, I mean, I just kicked your ass at everything I never else, thought so. I'd be frying over a jungle. <laughs> Love that, man. Uh, okay, so if we're going to do one weird one to warm up, we've got like seven minutes. Show them money. The money puzzle. Oh, money puzzle exchanger. That's, that's the one. And it's a shame because I had... Uh, add to custom folder, and I want to I want to create a custom folder. Oh, there we go, money puzzle exchanger. Oh, I guess it's too late to uh, bother doing that. Okay, so uh, let me know when we have actual live people. It's so weird to you don't have anybody in yet. But... Okay, it's so weird to stream and not see people. I have tweets automatically ready to go. I, you know, I knew that you would, but I didn't, so sure. I'm actually copying and pasting this on I'm also monitoring the other ones so I can see how they are going to pass it off to you. They, they don't pass it off very well. Susan will say, hey guys, or whoever, uh, somebody official in their chat room will be like, okay, we're switching over to Dan now. Yep, that's why I'm looking here, and then you still have nobody in your stream. And we may not. They may all show up on the other, the other thing. So, magical drop, pull down, pull down coins of the same denomination in fives and twos. Oh, that's interesting. I have that wired for two two credits for every press. Let's fight to computer, Rob. <laughs> Take that, computer. It's the battle of two persons. I surely get Sakura next time. Let's start Sakura's puzzle class. Screw it, you know how to do it. Let's see. Do you want the uh, the dominatrix kind of lady with a cape? What, what, what are you suggesting? Uh, I, I recommend uh, exchanger, I like the exchanger, actually. Cherry biter. Cherry biter is fine. I'll do it. Fine. <laughs> it's going to be one of those dreams, is it? <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, pull with A and throw with B. Or the equivalent. Well, it depends on the denomination of the coin, you see. So, uh, five of hundreds or tens, uh, and ones. And if the coin starts with one, you need five of them. If the coin starts with five, you need two of them. So. Apart from five hundreds. Yeah, this is not going well for you, Rob. No, no, it's, um, it's... Uh... Well, this is an impossible game. Did I mention yeah, that? It's just the weirdest game. I had I had the actual cart for uh, Michael. I love that you're scribbling angrily, Rob, when you lose. You can also sometimes get three of them. Like if if, if you uh, you do two at once, and you wind up matching a third that's like on the side. said to Heidi Kemps after hearing her on a podcast she talked about Magical Drop and I said I didn't realize you were a Magical Drop fan we should play and 
and she's like, all right, get ready to get get burned down or something like that. And I'm like, this was a friendly invite to play, but if you want to go, I will destroy you. I will I will bury you in magical will, will drop. You undefeat, un I'm undefeatable. I'm undefeatable. Uh, I actually took a character from Magical Drop, put it on a milk carton, and said, missing Heidi Kemp's Magical Drop two skills. Uh, she was pissed. She's like, look at this old man talking shit at me. And I'm like, fuck you. You've been around as long as I have. So, all right. Um, we're three minutes away. So let's just, uh, I think, just stand here. Oh, here's, here's that ridiculous Monopoly thing from the UK. Look at that, first of all. It supports a mouse, which means it was probably a touchscreen game for Bar Top in the UK. Um, Who's making money? Oh! You know what I should have really shown you is this amazing UK-developed arcade game called Mug Smashers. Have you... It's, so is it, it's like a... The bar, is it a it's a go-right beat-em-up. Oh! Called Mug... No, it's not Tapper. Oh. Mug is in faces. Mug as in oh, faces, yes. Oh, okay. You've been out of the UK too long, Rob. You know, that's true. I am. Oh, game continue. You recognize that I played. <laughs> How unfortunate. What would you like? Technology? Yes. Great. I wonder what button that is. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we, we broke it. Well it's done. A black screen of death. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mug Smashers. And then the MTV Rock and Roll Trivia Part 2. I've never found the ROM for Part 1, uh, but this is courtesy of 1986. So if you knew Rock and Roll in 1986, Sandy would I can't, be great at this. I can't see what you're doing, whatever you're doing. No, you can't see any of this. That, I'm just pointing that out to you. Yeah. yeah. This is from Electronic Devices Italy slash 3D Games England, 1990? Like, it's so well known yeah. that the people don't even know. Look, we're in San Francisco. Yeah, Here's the Northern place. Waterfront. Hey, I used to live there. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Like... I, you can tell it was like, you know what, Doctor Who has some pretty incredible uh, production value. I wonder if we can we can do some of that. Why are you hitting me, you son of a bitch? Have they given any indication, Kat? They have, Okay. Oh, all right. Sorry. So let's get let's get NBA NBA yams going. Apparently she did something with bird. Um, so do you want to be Raiden or Sub Zero? Those are the two I would recommend. Uh, I'll go Raiden. Okay. So it's Raiden July 9th. Do red July 9th. Switching over to you in just a moment. Okay. Welcome to uh, hour 87 of the Take This Stream Extravaganza. My name's Dan Amrick, and this is my house, Sunkissed Manor. Welcome. This is Rob Smith. You may or may not know him because he's the guy that posed looking very intelligent as the editor in chief of every video game magazine ever created, except for the one that Futters works for. So, um, uh, hi, we are big arcade nerds, uh, specifically me. This is, this is my true passion, is uh, I grew up. 
uh, on the arcade games of yore. And uh, you better hurry up and choose. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is showing you some weird uh, arcade games you've probably never seen before. Uh, obviously, oh, oh, it was me that hadn't chosen a mix. Um, this is NBA Jam Tournament Edition. This is not a hack. This is the 1.0 chipset uh, that actually has Mortal Kombat characters hidden in it. Uh, it was so popular that the NBA demanded that it be removed from arcades immediately, leading to 1.1. So very few people have even seen uh, this, but they, they put uh, Sub-Zero, Raiden, and... Uh, Reptile in, as well as the cheerleaders, and, some, uh, and Ed Boon and John Tobias are in the game as well. Um, Do they know about it? Uh, yeah, they, they know about it, but the NBA uh, was super angry about this, and I found out about it um, because I had done a, an interview with Mark Trammell when I was uh, just a young games journalist, uh, and uh, I had like sort of talked about the, the extreme success of the franchise, and that it had made a billion dollars in quarters and, you know, like, that it was this insane thing. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, we've got some cool surprises coming for the next game. So I, I was writing, you know, basically writing an article about that. And uh, he called me back really nervous and said, did you go to print? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, uh, we're not going to be able to put those, uh, we're not going to be able to put those games, uh, those characters in. The NBA found out that we put in, like, a character who's famous for ripping people's heads out of their, you know, and spines out of their bodies. And they're like, we're not that kind of organization. You know, we're a family. The NBA is family friendly. How dare you? Did you really take the bulls? <sighs> Um, all right, so what you're seeing is, uh, oh, and, and you can, if you find a 1.0 chipset, you can log in as these characters. Um, uh, Sub-Zero's code is sub, uh, November, uh, December 5, and, uh, Raiden is, uh, R-A-D July 9. These are not in the home versions of the games, uh, as far as I know, um, well done. Dude. Come on, referees! Oh, and Rob's from England, so as you can see, he's very polite. Um... That was some bullshit. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to try to answer questions about. Oh, all right. Uh, hold on, let me quickly check. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, let me quickly see if I can. No, it's not that. All right, so I'm gonna bump up our volume a little bit. Hi, is that better? From... All right. Uh, Kat Trinauk is on the, uh, the official Sunkiss Matter couch trying to help monitor the chat because this is a physical main machine, so we've got, you know, a full control panel and stuff. I don't have a second monitor, uh, so I can't see the chat while we're doing this, and I don't have room nearby to, uh, to do it in real time. So Kat is going to monitor the conversation. If you hear problems with the audio or if you have questions, she's got her own microphone, and she will attempt to jump in and help us out while you suck. Well done. Thank you. Um, That's very nice of you. Uh, so yeah, we were we're going to be showing some other games over the next hour that uh, you've probably never ever seen before, um, including some prototypes. Uh, I know that we're not going to be able to beat Justin McElroy playing Harvester, no matter what you do, because that that's inspired. That was one of my favorite horrible games. We put that. Oh, you're on fire, you son of a bitch. Uh, we put that on our uh, top 10 most violent games of all time feature at Flux Magazine in 1994. Um, because it was just so ridiculously gory and stupid. But uh, it was, I mean, come on. And it was terrible. Well, but the first puzzle to get out of the sphincter? Yes, yes. I mean, any, any game where you have to get out of, out of, out of an asshole is... Uh, a good one, I suppose. Give me the ball! Did I mention this is for charity? If you guys have not yet donated to, uh, to take this for the scholarship fund, uh, you should do that. Uh, we'll, we'll flash a URL in between games uh, that you can donate to. Uh, oh. oh, seriously? Well, I love that you played as, as the Bulls and you went with Tony Cooper instead of, like, Pip and, you know. Why wouldn't you? Uh, well, Are I you, think because you, the score is 21 to 20. I think you're hating on, uh, your coach, but... I'm, I'm not hating on... Wow. That's beautiful. So this one's the turbo button. If you... Oh, oh, you, okay, you know where it is. Alright, alright, we'll just check it. Damn. <laughs> oh. Oh. So I just... Oh. Did you just wake up the beast? 
I, I have awakened the beast. <laughs> Uh, wait until a little bit later, oh. then. yeah. Sorry, Sub Zero from from. Yeah. Uh, from Let's go in. Sub Zero's real name is Steph Curry. Um, do you shoot or do you just pass? You're just the, you're the point guard. Yeah, you're no, setting yeah, up. Absolutely. Oh my God. Oh. Nope. No, no, do not. No. Oh, wrong button. Oh, look, it's the half. We're gonna have to switch games. And oh, actually, we can continue playing this one if you want. Damn. No, we can continue playing this one. Had a bit of a run there. We, I, I, I'm timing everything so that we have. We're gonna switch between different games. Uh, we're dead. Uh, do, would you like to? Uh, would you like to swap characters? Why? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Ewing. I'm just saying you have Why? Pippin. If yes. you want to, you could. You could go to Pippin. You could go to Tim Armstrong. Is it Tim Armstrong? Oh, let's go. No, oh, no, 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 I, no, no, I, if you want to do Kukoc with his dunks of two, oh, yeah, you go right just, ahead. That's, that's, well, you got to pass to a Ewing. Yeah, but Oh, that, but you don't pass. Right. And yeah. I do dunk. Ewing so. doesn't even, Ewing can't even move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been looking forward to this for a long time. Um, <sighs> so, yeah, if you... Cracking knuckles to make sure you're ready. And yeah, I did that before you got here. Um... So yeah, unfortunately, I believe uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition went through two other major revisions. Uh, I think the final chipset version is 3.1. So, um, you know, sometimes that was little tweaks to rosters, sometimes that's uh, mostly it's bug fixes. Ewing good on the blocks. And the dunks. Because he's 18 feet tall. Oh, I'm sorry. Scotty Pippen seemed to have fallen down. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what caused that. No. It's all going wrong. Knicks. Oh yeah. Now. Knicks. Through. Oh yeah. Oh shit. That was fast. Let's have some. Um. Again, if you have any questions, Cat is watching the chat room. Happy to try to answer any arcade uh, questions you might have along the way. Oh, Come thank, on! Thank you for the three. Appreciate oh, the three. Oh, oh. That's good. That is so Get Pippin out of there. What the hell? Uh, Papa Sloth is commenting that Pippin is, in fact, overpowered. Pippin is overpowered? Oh, well, then uh, it'll be even better if... Oh, wow, that was a soft three. Wow. It was, I mean, it was, not a, it was not a three, it was two. That's Boom! A, bit, a very soft three. <laughs> to be fair, Pippin was kind of overpowered in real life, too. Pippin was actually a really good player made much better by Michael Jordan. Obviously, he had somebody to work with, but... Um, From long range... I'm kind of hoping that, uh... Oh, shit! Hit him with a steal! Oh, no. Come on. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh! Oh, hold on. Let, oh, I'd like to apologize to you for that, because that was ridiculous. There's... I don't want to... I'm glad this game didn't have replays. Come on, get it. I remember when the, uh, when the home version of NBA Jam TV came out, it was, uh... It was a big deal to get it on the Jaguar because it had uh, sprite scaling. And the players would actually get slightly larger and slightly smaller as they went up and down the court like they did in the arcade. That was a big deal. Yeah, I'm a ball hog, so uh, Ewing went up for the dunk and I made him cancel the dunk. Nice. Third quarter, what you gonna do? Cry. Okay, good, because he can't switch teams. Hey, need, what about your clutch to. attribute? I do not need to. The Bulls, oh, the Bulls are, are a good, a good call. Come on, Scott. Ow! Oh, yeah. Ow! Boom. So the first thing you do is foul. All right. Did the refs call it? Did they? There are no so, refs. So it wasn't a foul, was it? There are no refs. Oh no. Yep. How is that possible? What Dick. the hell was that? That was a flagrant foul, as that flagrant was... as can possibly be. Dan Anoniman is asking if you guys have to put in quarters for this machine to work. Uh, sort of. We have, um, <laughs> there are little buttons underneath the control panel that add uh, credits, so I don't have everything on Super Free Play, but no, no actual coins are being, uh, because otherwise I would be charging Rob for every single game and we would pay off some more of this mortgage. Oh, shit. <laughs> No quarters at home in the making of this arcade. Yeah. Uh, oh shit, you're getting the. Uh, you're heating up there. 
No, 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 no. Scotty's on fire, by the way. You, you want to try what? to get it to Scotty, yeah. So, let one go. Yeah. Alright, now you're only down by 10. I should be nervous. But... Yeah, worries. Oh, Pippin fell down. Oh, what was that? Come on, referees. <laughs> I'm trying to oh. think of other NBA Jam trivia. I was gonna say, what did you talk about the main machine? What, um... Oh, the main machine. So, oh yeah, this is a great story. So, uh, I have a main machine uh, in my house, and uh, at one point I had four different arcade machines, uh, and then I moved around and had to sort of divest of some of them. My Neo Geo machine now belongs to uh, Michael Raparez. Uh, ex, uh, well, now he's working at Ubisoft, actually. Uh, and he's uh, the host of VG Apocalypse, video game Apocalypse uh, podcast. So if you're looking for something to listen to, go there and ask him how my, main, how my uh, Neo Geo machine is doing. But the main machine actually came... Every time I worked in a different magazine, we had a room for... <laughs> We had a room for video games, for arcade games. And uh, the magazine kept moving its offices, and we would wind up... Oh, that was it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Knicks win, as should be. <laughs> it, is, it is fantasy. It is fantasy. But yeah, there you go. Legitimately Mortal Kombat guys programmed in, yeah. and uh, the NBA threw a fit and made them remove them. Uh, who knows how much this game would have made if they had let them keep them in. But uh, well, so when Mark Trammell called me, he was very scared. He was extremely scared. Like the the, the NBA brought the licensing hammer. Um, Why don't you back out of this game? Um, yes, it is like very loud, and hopefully the the volume will be better when they get off of this game and they go to a different game. Yeah. So I've uh, we've we've uh, tried to adjust the volume as as much as we can. Uh, let me see if I can adjust the volumes on this side. We'll move up all the mics, including Cat. Uh, so Cat is playing the role of Oracle today. Uh, I guess that makes you Robin. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. What would we, oh, yeah, we said Quiz and Dragons. So uh, we have a lot of really weird games uh, that we've collected over the years. And Rob and I went to the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. If you are looking for a place to hang out in Las Vegas for a day and only want to spend $20, the Pinball Hall of Fame off the Strip is worth it. It's, it's just Fantastic. It's about a mile and a half, two miles off the Strip. Uh, it's probably down a mile and the, a half if you take the bus in the right direction. Yeah, we this, did that. We, we, went, we went the wrong direction uh, on the bus. But you can take a bus there. You get on uh, around uh, like the Luxor, Tropicana, the Excalibur, Tropicana, yeah, Tropicana, 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 Vegas, MGM, that, that, that end of the strip. If I actually say the corner, it'll make me look like I've been to Vegas too often. So. Yeah, well, you, no, have. You, you have, yeah. All right. Uh, and we found this game in the back yes. running. This is, this is uh, actually something that came out for PlayStation, I found out. Uh... And I was like, have you ever seen this? He says, no. I'm like, all right, well, we've got to do this. So it's a, uh, who would you like to be? Mm. It is an mm. RPG trivia game, uh, which just sounds fantastic. Um, so one, two, three, and four are your buttons. Yep. Oh, I get oh. that. It's chosen for us, so you're our wizard. Well, of course. Of course you are. Uh, so it's a board game style trivia game. Oh, okay. uh, Come with on, a Goblin. ninja. With a ninja, yes. Green slime. So to fight the green slime, we have to uh, answer the questions correctly. And Rob and I each have a health meter. Uh, Ross, Island. Ross Island. I'm going to guess. It's not Australia, yeah, so yeah, there, yeah, you, yeah. you get... Well done. Huh. So now we get to show how stupid we are. We need to get three... Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, Vernon present. Uh, danger. So you you can't say it out loud. You you need to to press the button oh one two three or four. Oh no no you're no you're playing. I know, you're you're I know, against I know. me. All right. right. I didn't ever got Doctor Seuss anyway. Right, I know so, nothing about Doctor Seuss. But we're playing cooperatively here. That's the thing. So uh, we had to get three right to defeat the green slime, and we did. And so now we're going to roll the we'll die again and move on. And <clears> we're heading our way towards a wyvern. Um, the no, problem the with trivia games made in 1992 is that all it's of the pop culture around. trivia it's... is related to that time. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say he had a marshmallow. Really? Who would do? Who would fight with a marshmallow salesman? I don't know. Five thousand. Uh, there is one of those. I actually thought it was James Madison, and I talked myself out of it. How would I? So have? we're starting to look a little. Uh, oh my there's a, god. I'm Milton. 
<laughs> milk in the toaster, of course. Keep in mind, you we played this suck. game. Shut up, cat. We played this game for oh, an, Jesus. Uh, an hour. Jeff George, of course. I was gonna go with Jeff George. His, the his, his, his was the only uh, thing that I. Oh, you know this. I don't. Rob plays golf. I do not. <laughs> Woo what is a slice mm -hmm. in golf? Uh, like right. one eighth mm -hmm. of a golf? I, you know. Uh, oh, uh, that, that was, was like, 1983. Yeah. Yes, it wasn't. And, and by one, I meant yeah. <laughs> oh, Rob, you're you're dead. Here, come back in. I, sorry, I didn't even see what it was. Wow, I really didn't expect that. Uh... Oh, here, I will play another character. I'm the ninja. Yeah. I really didn't expect that what, we would is, die no. in this game. I don't know the answer to that. Sonia? Heathcliff and Sonia? Yeah, wow. <laughs> On the so, searing, it's... It, it's, it's a, never, the only person I know is Angelion, and it's not that. <laughs> You're just <laughs> ran, He's just like, well... Uh, Wealth of Nations, that was... Uh, Ooh, yeah! Adam Smith, of course. Well done, <laughs> Rob. It only, One time. It only oh, no. cost us a couple of quarters. Yeah. I just... Now... <laughs> The thing that kills me is that this is a board, this is a CPS2 board, this runs on the same hardware as Street Fighter 2. So you could get a Street Fighter 2 machine, unplug uh, Street Fighter 2, and uh, and plug this in and, and baffle your friends. So you think you can handle my questions? Oh, you get to select the category. What would you like? Well, music. Okay. You want to do movies? No, no, no. Go no, move. movies is a good middle. Okay. Okay, let's do movies. Yes, I will suck it. Uh, oh, yeah, he appeared in... Who's the king of? I wasn't sure about the Academy Award. Yeah, I'm an old theater nerd. So. Rob, are you from the UK? Uh, James Dean was not in Easy That's Rider. That's correct. Uh, Easy Rider was uh, produced by the guys that did the Monkeys TV show. Not kidding. Bob Rafelson. Um, which one earned him an Academy Award, Richard? Well, very good. Should have won for Taxi Driver. Oh, no. So, no, see, clearly, the movies was, was the right thing to do. Do you know who lost to? Oh, 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 oh! Nephew. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy Bond. But anyway, who he lost to in uh, for um, Taxi Driver was Sylvester Stallone. For Rocky? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, because, I, I mean, I assume now, it's not... I said that my, off my, the top my of my head, and somebody whatever. on the stream might just say, yeah, holy crap, that's not <laughs> the case at all. But I'm pretty sure that that's what it was. Anonymon... Or Nunnaman is asking if Rob, if you're from the UK. Yes, Sheffield, home of Def Leppard. Home of Def Leppard and uh, many other great bands, like. Is Slade from Sheffield? No, Slade's from uh, I think Birmingham, somewhere in the in the uh, in the middle of the country. But uh, Cabaret Voltaire, let's go a little bit weird. Wow, that's good. Arctic how many monkeys? limbs does a squid? Oh, I don't like Arctic monkeys. I don't know how many limbs a squid has, but it's not eight, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was more than four. So, yeah. if you're just tuning in, we are playing uh, obscure arcade games for uh, the Take This Stream. Uh, oh, duh. That would be Merc yes. Mercury. It would. Uh, we're going to be switching games in a moment to something completely insane. More insane than this? <laughs> wow, it's like a trick question. No. Yeah, more insane than Capcom's 1992 <laughs> trivia opus Quiz and Dragons. Uh, the Cornhusker Nebraska. State is Nebraska, yeah. I was going to say, you would know that as a college sports fan. That, mostly, yes. Then they just and won, a fan of corn. Just won the Bruins. Uh, the, the largest Bruins human organ is the oh, it's... skin. Trick question. That. That's all right. Yeah, pardon that me. That is true, the largest human organ. Yeah, it was kind of true. We, we defeated, defeated the blob. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. That's not good. Christ. <laughs> uh, welcome to Beast Mountain. <laughs> Didn't we do an awful lot better than this in the We other? did a lot better than this when we did the other thing. Yeah. Oh, you choose the path. One or two. Papa Sloth is insisting that this should be modernized and uh, could be a big hit on Twitch. Oh, I would think yeah. this would be a great hit on Twitch. I think this, this has legs as, a, question, as yeah. a mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, sorry. I used to watch Family Ties. Again, remember, this is 1992, so what's trivia then? And before not, I came to this country. Uh, 1967. I would say. No, it was 1957. And and yeah, take like this thinks that the uh, outdated questions make it more fun. Yeah. Oh, here, do three. Do player three. Oh, number five. There yeah. you go. Be the girl. Number five. Number five. Sorry, you had to. Oh. You got locked out of that question. Oh, okay. I actually knew that one. Um. Did not write music. Stravinsky. Because it was modern. 
Yeah. Bright of Spring is not is not Baroque. Come on, man! You don't know your How many violins? feet are there in a mile? Ooh. 5,283. It wasn't a round number. Did That's I mention I host Jeopardy on PAX? When we do PAX? Come to PAX. <laughs> we'll play Jeopardy live. <laughs> yeah. Wow, there's a long way of saying who builds stuff. <laughs> well done. That was our seventh and... Uh... What, the title of this game again is... Game? The title of this game is... Quiz and Dragons colon Capcom quiz game, I think. Does or something like that. It's, it, uh, I, I thought it was oh, Alright, we'll, we'll do the Green Dragon and we'll switch games because yeah. uh, we've got a fighting game coming up next that neither of us know how to play <laughs> but has one of the best stories I could possibly offer Not you. Not suggesting that we actually know how to play this game as we're yeah, well, I mean, with yeah, this. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought we would have. Alright. Oh. Only even prime well, that's numbers. Easy. That's yeah. four. Yeah. Um... So it, it said that you used the magic of, of uh, choice. Lethal. Lethal, yes. She is 16, going on 17. <laughs> this is a family stream, right? Yeah. All right. That's why we're going to do a sing along. <laughs> um, I don't know. But you choose one, I'll choose the other. Okay, well done. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, Rob knows geography because he was not educated in America. <laughs> There's uh, more of the world out there, people. No, it's just Maine and then a, a, a cliff. You just fall <laughs> off a cliff when you reach Maine. Well, the world is flat, right? Well, you have to go up to, to Canada. You Aww. defeated the Green Dragon. You got 60% of them correct, Rob. Well done. Ooh, good for me. Not surprising. You will need all of your resources, oh. including the escape key. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Please save us. Says so anybody watching on the stream. You were you were smarter as a girl, I think. As, as a Valkyrie. Uh, all right, so. I don't know uh, where to go with that. No, that's that's fine. So you are watching uh, Amric Arcade. This is something I do every <laughs> once in a while, not often enough, where I go through my uh, main machine and I find some old games. Uh, obviously, right now you can see on the screen uh, we're doing this for it's dangerous to stream alone. This is part of hashtag Take This Stream. Uh, please uh, send out that thing, but please donate. Thank you to Paul Kerthoys, who was <laughs> who struck first and and hard with a twenty five dollar donation. We only have a very humble goal of a hundred bucks for this hour because I've never done a charity stream before. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, we weren't expecting a twenty five dollar donation. Uh, but that sets a beautiful pace. So if you can only give eighteen fifty, that's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you could if you could drop a, a couple of bucks in the jar, that would be really good. This is all for a really good scholarship fund. Um, and uh, it's the reason that we're going to suffer through one of the worst fighting games almost never made. Uh, this is a game called Tattoo Assassins. Now, I, I covered this game when I was working at a magazine called Flux in New York City. Uh, don't look for it. It's not there anymore. Um, <laughs> New York City is. Uh, sorry. It's the same way, mate. Um, so, uh, I think it's still on the map. Picture, if you will, uh, the, the early 1990s, um, and Mortal Kombat has changed how people see arcades suddenly everything has to be a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat clone. And so Data East, which was making pinball games at the time, said, we got to get in on this. And they recruited some of their pinball designers and a couple of uh, small people, uh, a small staff of people, and I mean small, like three, four, five people, not a lot of people, uh, make us a Mortal Kombat clone in eight months. And if you do, you will get a $25,000 bonus and then $25 for every game that comes off the line. So it's an impossible task, but that carrot is way too big. So they do that. They've got this idea, since they had just done a Back to the Future pinball game, uh, Bob Gale, the screenwriter of Back to the Future, said, I have this great idea about these fighters where their tattoos come to life and they, and they do battle for them. And no one will buy this as a movie script. But you know what? It would make a great game and we'll call it the Tattoo Assassins. And they're like, sure, okay, Bob, let's do it. So that's what you've got is a, that doesn't look too hard, I think we can do it kind of fighting game. 200 fatalities, including some of the most disgusting, stupid fatalities Sweet. out there. Uh, that's Ooh, Slash's know. wife. Okay, so Slash from Guns N' Roses, the guitarist, Data East had just done a Guns N' Roses pinball machine. So they had contact with Slash. Slash is a big fan of pinball itself. <laughs> he's a gamer. And um, there you go. So he's like, oh, my wife's a model. You need a model? You've seen 10 of 224 fatalities. That's only because I looked them up. So they're thinking, oh, that's catnip to gamers. They're going to love this. Um, so, yeah, designed in Chicago by Data East Pinball. We're not even video game <laughs> Life developers. Life violence yeah. is strong in this game. Yes. So um, 
uh, you choose your character. I'm going to choose uh, Hannah Hart, uh, the girl in the black, because Hannah Hart is somebody special. Uh, let me know about the volume on this game because I'm I'm afraid that oh, this one might need to be a little louder. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> kill. We're not even fake. So the thing is, you may have seen, and I don't know what any of the buttons do. So we are randomly going to be punching things uh, and and just seeing what happens. Oh, that. Uh, that's an uppercut. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Oh. Uh, this game went on on test, and they they paid people, and this comes from the programmer of the game. They paid people to play this game, and they didn't want to play it. Like, their own testers would, on their lunch break, would go play Mortal Kombat. Uh, so they could cleanse the palate, as it were. Um, this actress... Now, this is how I found out about the game. This model is a model named Gretchen Stockdale. She was a Raiders cheerleader at the time, and she was looking to make her name in modeling. And uh, they pitched... Flux, which was known for being kind of a snarky... Uh, it was aimed at the Beavis and Butthead crowd. Like, the, the game itself was... Uh, the magazine itself was like, Don't Ever Do This was one of our columns uh, where we... Uh, yeah, that's all right. Um, don't Ever Do This gave you explicit instructions on things you should never do. Like, don't ever... I wonder what happens if we start doing uh, quarter circles and, and shit like that. Uh, don't Ever Do This. Like, don't call this exact number uh, on your dad's phone if you visit him at the office because... It's the time and weather in Tokyo, and don't ever leave it off the hook because then that would just rack up a giant bill. So uh, they're like, hey, we've got this really hot girl, and you guys like to put pictures of hot girls in your magazine, uh, and her name's Gretchen Stockdale, and so uh, my, my fellow editor... I want to interrupt, Jen. Yes. Uh, Pantley Steve just said he one-upped Paul. I don't know what that means. In oh, all right. Maybe, uh, okay. okay, we're not watching the, uh, the money. Uh, uh, Kat, maybe oh. you can go to our, our, uh, our page and, and find that out on an alternate tab or something. Okay. When you get a chance, I don't know. Oh, no, no mercy. Okay. Oh, no. I have to do no, something. What are you going to do? I, I'm going to yeah, smack yeah. you slightly. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, we need to do other characters, though. Yeah, we need to try other characters. <clears throat> so, Gretchen Stockdale wound up... Oh, here's their fake Nancy Kerrigan character. Because, again, early 90s, there was the whole ice skating thing. <laughs> uh, Steve donated $26. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Thank you, Pam and Steve. Much appreciated. <laughs> Everyone, listen to Press A to Listen, uh, the podcast that Steve has been on for the last couple of years. Um, uh, so Gretchen Stockdale, it turns out, in the middle, right after we run this article, and we did run, we ran a small article saying, like, oh, here's this cute girl, Gretchen Stockdale, and here's this, this hot new fighting game coming from Data East, and you're not going to believe it when it comes out. It's going to be, it's going to one-up Mortal Kombat. It's going to be ridiculous, and it's going to be insane, and, you know, it is ridiculous. It is ridiculous and insane. And here comes Gretchen Stockdale being mentioned as part of the entire OJ thing. OJ left a message on Gretchen's answering machine the night before the murder saying, Baby, everything's going to be okay. I've taken care of some things, and we can finally be together. We put on our cover in the little, like, you know, message where you can <laughs> say something. We're like, because we had said on her issue, Gretchen rules, because my, my editor had a big crush on her. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead, whatever. You know, like, I had talked to Carrie Hoskins, who was Sonya in MK3 for an article, and uh, Carrie and I hit it off. We we're actually still good friends. Um, and The fact that you guys would one-up whose fake oh, yeah, girlfriend yeah, yeah. was Yeah, he's like, no, Gretchen, Gretchen is awesome. So he put Gretchen rules on the cover. And then the next issue, he put that in that same spot. Gretchen and OJ? <laughs> Gretchen's lawyers contacted us in a hurry, folks. And they were like, you will not connect her in any way, shape, or form to this. She has not been linked to any of this. Um, so, yeah, that was Gretchen Stockdale. This is... Gretchen Stucker went on to become a television producer in Los Angeles. Um, so what you're not seeing here, and the reason, you know, uh, it, it are all these ridiculous uh, uh, fatalities. Because Bob Gale uh, did, uh, I'm going to play the most offensive dude that I, I could find in here, Billy Two Moons. He's, he's this super offensive Native American character. Look at that. And uh, he's obviously a white guy, too. It's just, oh, there's nothing good about it at all. Derek O'Toole. <laughs> you know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby! Uh, so this game uh, has among its fatalities, you can drop a DeLorean on people. Nice. And it says 1.21 gigawatts when you do it. Uh, it's got inexplicably 
Like, it's got all the disgusting things you would think of. You know, you can pull out people's organs and you can slice them into pieces and all that shit. And you're not coming anywhere near me, are you? Oh! Oh, I don't know what I did to do that. <laughs> I hit you with a chain. I'm sorry. I did, yeah. Um, I'm just going in circles and trying no, to... No, that's fine. Yeah, oh. that's, that's the only thing you can do. It's, I don't know how, to, how this game works either. Um, uh, and you actually... There's no polite way to say this. You shit Ooh. turkeys out of your ass. Uh, about 200 turkeys come out of your butt and, and just overwhelm the other player. And it says, Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, I had meant to write down one of the fatalities so that we could do it, and I totally forgot. Um... Uh, but this game, uh, I was actually, the programmer, I, I had created a little shrine because the game disappeared. It never came out in arcades. It was on test. There's maybe 20 machines out there total, most of which were created for a, uh, yeah, there, I've got a snake that I can, I think that's my, uh, oh yeah, that must be my tattoo coming to life. Oh, get over here. <laughs> um, yeah, terrible game. Wow. Uh, and I had created a little web page about it, which you can still find at my website at moneyears.net. Uh, and it's a terrible web page, too. But I had, like, <laughs> I had screenshots that were printed out on photo paper. Uh, I had uh, a poster. It's time for real mano a mano, so here's two, uh, yes. two ladies. The ladies not do you, you want to play the, uh, the lady, the Maya, the tiger lady? And I will play uh, AC, uh, whatever his dumb name is. Where is she? She's over there. One? Yeah, my oh, never mind. Okay, okay well we'll do uh, we'll do this. Um, and I just I was like wondering whatever happened to this game because this exists somewhere and they you know we did we did almost a full page story on it thinking like ha ah, this looks goofy let's do it. Uh, oh. And the programmer uh, like a tester one of the testers uh, wrote to me and said yeah I tested that game I can confirm it existed and this is all before Mame you know. Um, and Thomas the, Loth has said this game is so bad it's actually wrap, wrapping around to being good. It, it, exactly. I don't know if that's true. Um, I, I really don't know if that's I th true. I think part of it has got to be finding Ooh. out what those fatalities are and the, now, going through all those. And... Yeah, there there is a list. You can, you know, if you search Tattoo Assassin's move list, you can find it. Uh, I'm not sure. EGM2 did an eight-page story on this game, an eight-page story, which I have scanned and it's on my Tattoo Assassin's page. So you can see a lot more uh, on that page, but it includes a verbatim email that I got from the game's programmer <laughs> who said, I found your page, I was very amused by it. The old girl deserved every bit of, of rancor you gave her. And he explained that they were literally throwing up in garbage cans. One of the guys was was sick, but they had to keep crunching. They were in non-stop crunch for eight months. And he said, guy was not feeling well. He had some stomach virus or something like that. And I remember that he was sitting there coding, typing away on his computer, leaned over into a garbage can, vomited, and never left and went back to coding. So that, you know, all you kids out there that want to be game developers, <laughs> you might make Tattoo Assassins one day yeah. and that's what your life would be like. Yeah. Um, now the interesting, I am going to switch games because let's face it, oh my god. Um, <laughs> Tattoo Assassins ooh. IP is owned by a Japanese company called G-Mode. Now they make mobile games, but they bought Data East's access, assets when Data East went out of business as a video game company. So, that's yeah, that's, well, they can't see that. But yeah, I have a screenshot of Carla Keller, uh, I'm sorry, of, yeah, Carla Keller, who's the, uh, the, the uh, ice skating character, shitting a turkey onto, uh, onto Billy Two Moons. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it's a so what I'm saying is Tattoo Assassin, somebody owns that IP, we know who it is. All I think we really need is a hashtag campaign, <laughs> and they will hear us, and they will bring out Tattoo Assassins again. But um, it, so it needs a, re a reboot. Yeah. So I mean, we need to see all those fatalities. I want to know. I mean, if if she's doing that with that turkey against that guy, I think what else is in there? I think it's okay that we haven't. So there were two more games we were going to play, uh, and one is a sports game. And what was the other non-sports game? What? Oh, oh yeah, it was one of my favorites. This is a good game. And uh, you're really going to like this. Um, this is a 1992 mm. arcade uh, prototype from oh. Atari called Sparks, or Dr. Sparks' Lab, depending on uh, who you believe. Um, 
Well, no, because the it's it's the ROM is called Sparks. The marquee that I've seen is Sparks, but the, clearly the 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 title screen says Bar Doctor Sparks' lab. Now, this is 1992. Again, Mortal Kombat has changed how people see the internet or see see the internet, see arcades. Everything has to be two player competitive. Everything has to be a fighting game specifically. So Atari is working on things like Mace: The Dark Age, uh, and you know they're they're working on fighting games. Um, uh, what was the name of their uh, Champions of the Hood? was their fighting game from this era. But uh, they still have people that are trying to make good games, too. <laughs> and uh, the guy who co-created Clax, his name was uh, David Akers. And you can see Dave Id <laughs> is up there, uh, you know, before I, I misplaced I, uh, some of his his, uh, his things. So, and then KFT is Kelly Turner. And Kelly Turner uh, is the project leader here, but Kelly Turner and Dave Akers was the original concept. Dave Akers is the co-creator of Clax, one of Atari's best puzzle games ever. And Kelly Turner was the programmer on Atari's version of uh, Tetris in 1988. So this is like an all-star crew. He's like, you know what we should do? We should do a game like with pipes. And those of you who remember early 1980s uh, uh, like DOS games, there were a series of games called Pipes or pipes. Pipe Dream yep. was, was, I think, the Broderbund version, yep. where the whole goal is to connect two sides of a pipe or to keep... Uh, a pipe segment going while uh, like water flows through it, and the longer you can keep it going, sort of a variation on snake, right, or surround. Um, so they took that and said, well, what if we did that with a Tetris two-player dropping into a pit puzzle-style game? Uh, and that's what Sparks turned out to be. Uh, so we'll do it in two-player mode so mm -hmm. that we can help me build the monster. Um... So you're playing uh, to help Dr. Sparks create a monster, and of course, uh, that monster is female and has metallic giant breasts. Um, but I'm, we're going to leave that to complete two sparks to, to complete the head. So you're dropping these things. You can rotate them. Um, but your goal is to make the most efficient connection between the red side and the blue side of your pit. Excellent. Uh, this is a wonderful game that simply didn't make it because it didn't do well on test. And this is what happens to a lot of arcade games that were great. Um, I finished first, and here I get a, I get an award for that. Um, well done, Dan. Yeah, so if we if we had the... Uh, I the, silver. There we go, so you can see that the we've got the head of the girl and the... So if you get an yeah, arrow... I've never seen you do two-player on this before. I've yeah. only seen one player where you see the... Where you see the, the robot head. the whole time. So if you want to remove a, a block, use the arrow and point the arrow at the open part of the block. But be careful because you can also delete an entire range of blocks. I'm going to do it over on my side so that people can see. It's going to make just that one because it terminates at the side. But if I were to do that with uh, one mm -hmm. of these whole uh, entire... Uh, streams, it would make the whole thing disappear. Oh, crap. And you're going to start seeing... So, I think this is brilliant. Uh, who I don't know, like, it seems like every 15 seconds somebody else gets the Atari uh, IP. This is still belonging to Atari. This would be a fantastic mobile game. Uh, I think this would work really well as, like, an Xbox Live Arcade, you know, a direct download kind of game. Uh, I'm going to oh, use my uh, arrow to get rid of the, the thing. Uh, oh, shit. Bed and Sis is saying there was a PopCap game that was also similar about firing about firing fireworks until dawn. Oh, really? I have no idea. So there we go. Uh, so yeah, there are three of these machines known to exist. One is with Kelly Turner. One shows up at the California Extreme uh, arcade game show every year. Uh, a private collector acquired this board. This runs on the same hardware. There's there's metallic boobs. You get wooden boobs. They're better, Sorry. right? Are they? Mm. I don't know, splinters. But, splinters, yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, the idea being, uh, they were, Atari was working on, uh, you know, this is not uncommon in arcade uh, stuff, is that you maximize your investment. If you've got uh, a chipset that works well, uh, that your programmers are experienced in using and you want them to uh, to make more games on that because you already have bought all the chips then you would develop extra games for that hardware specifically um, and so this was built on the arcade classics 
uh, hardware, which is amazing in and of itself because that game never came out. Uh, they were working on Super Centipede and Missile Command 2 as part of the Arcade Classics thing. So, like, well, while we're working on that, let's go ahead and do uh, another game on that same hardware. Ooh, that was that was dangerous. Ooh, crap. Oh, shit, I've blown that. Yeah, I've totally screwed up my name. As usual, most arcade games get difficult on the third round, and this is the third round, and this is when they start going, okay, you have to give us another quarter. Uh, it's not nefarious, it's just the way that arcade design works. Uh, oh. oh, that's pointless. So if you would like to play this game in person, which is how I found out about it, um, I saw it at Cal Extreme, and I just approached it. It was on free play. Um, come to San Jose, California, uh, this July. Every year it's July. They haven't announced the final dates. Uh, you can go to caextreme.org to get information about the uh, about the show. I understand that the guy that runs their Twitter account is devastatingly handsome. <laughs> um, I, I, I will I will back that up. That, that is a fact. That is a known fact around the industry. Uh, but at California Extreme, you can actually play games that you will uh, literally never play anywhere else. Uh, because they only exist in prototype forms, and literally people uh, who used to work at Atari took their work home with them. Um, and that's that's how we have Sparks today, uh, is because uh, somebody that knew it existed... Broke this. Yeah, I broke mine pretty oh hard, my. too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're both in, in crap. Oh. Hey, I think it's probably time to change games. Yep. Uh, anyway, uh, but... But there's Sparks. Yeah, I love Sparks. I think Sparks is really a lost uh, a lost opportunity. Um, and Kelly Turner had said that he thought that the reason it didn't catch on is because it was a little too hard to understand. People understand dropping blocks, but then making them also sort of make spatial reasoning at the same time. Oh. What are you doing? Uh, I'm fucking up, if there's any doubt about that. Oh. Yes! I connected a goddamn Spark. Um... Yeah, it's over. I'm just gonna... I'll kill it. Oh! Um, but yeah, I think this is a fantastic game. And uh, again, it's it's one of those designs that a company owns this IP. Atari has this, doesn't know they have it. And uh, if they were looking to, you know, to make some quick cash with a good puzzle game, it's right there for them. Hell, they could even build a uh, an emulator to run this code. <laughs> you know, and save themselves uh, some developer cost. But in any case, um, again, if you ever find one out in the wild, uh, it's yeah, going to be a small is, miracle yeah. because uh, because there's only three really in existence. Bad. No, but that's that was a good move. That was a good move. You uh, just oh, you had it. I don't know. There, there you go. You got it. Really fun game. Uh, really difficult when it gets going. Uh, I almost showed Chicken Shift, which is another very difficult puzzle game uh, from Nolan Bushnell, of all people. Uh, but, uh, you know what? I could do an entire hour on just bizarre puzzle games, too, from, uh, from the arcade. If you're just joining us, hi, welcome, and thank you for supporting. Hashtag take this stream. Uh, my name's Dan Amrick. I'm an arcade junkie. So is Rob Smith. And uh, we both work in the industry now for various uh, monolithic corporations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but when we're not working for our monolithic corporations, we like to go to arcade and play pinball and play uh, old school video games. Uh, there, it's true that video games did not actually begin with the Nintendo Entertainment System, something no. a lot of people don't seem to don't know tell anymore. People, um, and I grew up in the golden age of arcades, so that's what I'm still very, very passionate about. Um, you know, I live my life a quarter at a time, to paraphrase Vin Diesel. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, as a result, I... I, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was very proud that, uh, you know, when I worked at magazines, if it was an arcade thing, like, if I told them the answer, they were like, okay, that was considered fact-checking. There was no other way to check facts. You would have to call an expert, and I was the arcade there expert. There was no Wikipedia. Oh, do you want to put your, your initials in there? Why don't you put your no, initials? No, 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 because no, it's a great script. You'll, now you'll infect my main machine for all time. Um... But yeah, you can see that there's a little DNA in here from Clax. There's a little DNA from Tetris. You can, it feels similar, and the hardware just like looks the same. Uh, look at that. Well Somebody done. called Viventer v who said he started on an Acorn Electron. Electron. Yes. Now we're talking. The Acorn Electron. Now we're talking. Which was a piece of crap, I think. <laughs> 
No, it was uh, it was one of those early right around the Spectrum and Commodore sixty four, and then the step up was the Acorn Electron, and it wasn't really because nobody made any games for it. And as much as we were all telling our parents, no, we need this for school for computers, no, we were no, actually playing for, games yeah. on it. I had a and as soon as the double tape decks right, started coming oh out, yeah, 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 man. Oh, I had one of my friends guilt trip me because I was like copying Scott Adams adventure games. Uh, that were on cassette tape that you would just say, well, yeah, that's no problem. Here, record it at high speed. It's fine. And if you've never heard what a cassette tape sounds like, data sounds like, oh. in the old days you had computers and you would plug a tape recorder into the computer and it would make this sound that was... For about seven minutes? Yeah, it was It was the easiest way. I would buy these really cheap cassette tapes from Clover. Yep. You know, because, hey, 69 cents for a cassette tape, right. that's fine. You can fit five TI-9948 programs If you on get there. a C90, you could fit exactly. 10, 15 yeah. games on there. That's... And then the minute that it, it crinkles right. up, you've lost 50 games. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, in any case... Um, <laughs> The last game we're going to play uh, today, before we yeah, turn this over. Icon I've never heard, I haven't even heard anybody yeah. say the phrase, Icon Electron. We appreciate that. So we appreciate that. Uh, we're going to, we started with basketball, That's we're going to end with basketball um, for a very special reason, and that reason is my ego. Um, Remember uh, to speak up over. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so this is NBA Maximum Hang Time. This was the chipset upgrade to NBA Hang Time, which was the sequel to NBA Jam, but they couldn't call it NBA Jam because the NBA went and licensed the name NBA Jam to Acclaim, who had been doing the home games. Acclaim said, well, if you own the license, then we can give you money for the license. They did this without consulting Midway because they're like, F you, we're the, we're the NBA. We don't need anything. When Midway approached the NBA to talk about doing NBA Jam. The NBA didn't want to have anything to do with it. Oh, arcades, that's where people deal drugs and there's CD <laughs> bars and they, the, we don't want the, we don't want the NBA brand sullied by something as lowbrow and, and, uh, you know, nefarious and dark. And I'm like, have you seen how many kids your star athletes have fathered? <laughs> um, you know, so yeah, whatever. Pot calling the kettle black, but, uh, the, the point being, they had to be talked into it. And they said, all right, well, you come up with a name, but we'll own the name. And they're like, well, of course, it's got NBA in it. Licensing, the IP mm -hmm. would have to belong to them. So um, they did that. And then they, you know, huge success, billion dollars in quarters. NBA Jam Tournament Edition comes out, refreshes everything. Crazy success. And Acclaim licenses from Midway and the NBA, a double license so they could make the home games. They make oodles of money. They decide that Acclaim wants to get into the arcade business and they say, you know what this game needs to be? 3D. They make a terrible polygon NBA Jam call, a game called NBA Jam Extreme. They add a fourth button. Extreme. So one X or two? Or uh, three? No, one, one X. One X, okay. Yeah. But I don't know if there was an E in front of it or not, <laughs> uh, now that you mention it. Uh, they add a fourth extreme button, because turbo isn't enough. So when you want to do a super mega hyper dunk, yo, it's radical, press the extreme button. Um, it was basically like a second level of turbo. It was stupid. Um, which left Midway to go, how do we follow up with uh, NBA Jam? Their answer was, okay, well, it hurt, but we'll just create a new thing. How about the name NBA Hang Time? And we're going to stay with 2D, but we're going to do it 60 frames a second. So while everybody thinks that 60 frames a second is like a hot thing now, it turns out that they were way ahead of it. Uh, this is one of the first 60 frame games that I can think of. And do you want to do you want to enter my name? Do you want to play as me too? Sure. So if you enter in the arcade game or on the uh, N64 version of this game, uh, Amric two zero two zero, Amric twenty twenty, which I've been assured is not a joke about my eye, um, you will actually see my digitized face in this game because I was working for a basketball magazine called Slam, which is still around, I believe. I, Lily White Dan Amrick was the first regular video game reviewer for Slam Magazine, one of the coolest, most urban uh, NBA magazines around. And uh, I was doing an interview with him, and I said, you know, how do you choose the secret characters? I know we've talked about this before. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we had the same discussion that we always have. And Mark Tremel says... Oh. Yeah, sorry, there's a little bug with the emulation. Uh, sitting next to my arc, my main machine is an actual NBA hang time machine. 
Um, and they said, hey, you want to be a secret character? And I thought they were kidding. I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Yeah, sure. He goes, okay, man, we're going to need uh, photos by, by Tuesday. And I'm like, you're serious? He goes, yeah. He's like, I'm, he's like you know, we put... We put characters in there, uh, we put people in there who, like, support us or that, you know, don't get a lot of uh, stuff behind the scenes. Now, I know it's about ethics in game journalism, but this was 1994. I didn't care. I wanted to be in a video game, and my bosses were like, dude, that's super great. Go for it. You know, they didn't care. So, um, I'm much better at hang time than I am at jam. Um, by the way, this is very surreal to, to have to guard myself. Hey babe, um, is this the only game you're in? Um, it's the only game my face is digitized in. My name showed up in a couple of other games. I'm sure Rob, yours has as well. One. Yeah? That I know of. Um, Worldwide Soccer um, from Sega. Um, they signed Kobe Jones right at the end, so they needed to add another name um, to the uh, roster. So, hey, a Smith is uh, the... <laughs> is the center half for England in that game and we uh, need a generic last name yeah. like Jones so how about Smith but but the producer was smart enough to say yeah of course we uh, we needed the uh, oh Thank you. come on uh, of course we need the um, you know uh, we need the extra name so why don't we make it you why don't yeah um, well isn't there a sports game like a college sports game that like everybody is like almost yes. all the journalists are in Fox College Hoops 99 on N64 so Rob there may be another game that you're yeah. in yeah basically um, most uh, 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 five or six Ooh. of the teams in that game are entire editorial staffs of American magazines at the time yeah um, oh, oh yes did you see so <laughs> The thing I love about hang time, uh, mechanically, is that you can do um, really good layups. Now, you could do layups in TE, but it was hard. And I've, I've, I think I've only done it once, if I've done it at all. But you can send somebody, you can tell your opponent, go up for a dunk, and then throw to them. Or if they flash, that means, hey, I'm going to go up for a dunk. If you just pass it at that point... Uh, it, it, they will then complete, they'll start their dunk before they have the ball, you throw them the ball. Uh, it's a really fun mechanic, and it's a great way to piss off your friends. Um, so, yeah, I, this this happened, I was lucky, I uh, and I said, uh, and now at this time, keep in mind that my wife and I have often worked together, we worked together at GamePro Magazine, uh, and at the time we were in New York, we were working on different projects, but in the same cubicle. So I get off the, the interview call, because she had to listen to all of my interview calls, and I said, you're not going to believe this. They just offered me the chance to be in their next NBA game as a secret character. And she says, great, you should wear the bunny ears. And I'm like, no, that's stupid. Why would, why would I do this? This is for posterity. And I had a running joke of wearing bunny ears at the time. Let's uh, not even get into the bunny ears No, story. the bunny ears story is actually explained at bunnyears.net slash <laughs> why. The letter, the, like, why do you wear bunny ears? Um... And that page definitely looks like it was designed in 1950, uh, 1995. Uh, so um, I went and, and I was super proud, and I went and told a friend. I was like, "Hey, guess what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get to be a, a, a secret character in the next NBA game." And he said, "Cool, man. You should wear the the bunny ears." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's a great idea." As if my wife had not mentioned it ten minutes before, or that I had rejected that idea. Oh. This is the first <laughs> one of the first of many times this is, will happen. Yeah. So. Um, Oh, come on. Congratulations. The stream has, uh, take this, has raised $9,700. Not all on your thing, but just let's... No, well, uh, we're going to take we're gonna take credit for as much of that as we possibly can. If you have not donated for the Take This Stream, yes. please do so. Uh, feed more than my ego. Feed the tip jar for, uh, for Take This Stream. Uh, you can oh. donate to our specific, if you like our stories and stuff, you can donate to our specific page at uh, bit.ly uh, slash take this amrick. Uh, it was the first thing that came to mind. Oh, shit, man. Um, and then he swears. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> if you oh. like swear words, please donate to this stuff. Or take um, this. Well, so, yeah, we're, to, uh, we're you know, doing it's... this for fun, but not all for fun. This is for charity, and let's let's get that scholarship fund going. Oh. Ewing, just so big, he can knock people over during the dunk. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the coach that's on the bench there in the blue shirt with the tan tie. That is Roger Sharp, author of the classic book, Pinball. Roger Sharp is the guy who, if you watch Drunk History, you've seen Roger's story uh, illustrated this year. He's the guy that had to testify 
and called his shot for pinball to prove that pinball was a game of skill and therefore not gambling and should not be illegal in New York City. Uh, that's Roger Sharp. He went on to work for uh, Williams Bolly Midway, which made uh, Midway games, um, Williams Arcade uh, pinball machines, um, Bolly. Uh, so, you know, this is the company that made, that, that developed, uh, that distributed Pac Man. I'm going to go with my favorite player of all time, Larry Johnson, Grandmama. The, the I'm sticking with Del Curry because, really? you know, the Warriors and it's, you know, okay. Steph, Steph's dad and... All right. Oh, is Del Curry Steph's career? I yeah. did not know that. We live in the Bay Area, so that was kind of embarrassing for me to not know. Go Larry. LJ was my favorite NBA player of all time. I still have his jersey. The, I only bought one replica oh. NBA jersey in my entire life and it was Larry Johnson. I just loved him. And he's a total team player. He's like, he, he obviously was a, you know, a spotlight guy, had the shoe deal, had, you know, all that stuff. But oh. when it came time to uh, to step back when he was playing for the Knicks, he was the team captain, and he was not the flashy guy. He was the guy that got stuff done as power forward. I always really respected his game. Wasn't he playing out of position as forward? Uh, no. I think, no, I think he's naturally a power forward. I may be thinking of somebody um, else. I thought at one point everybody... He may have been on guard, and that would have been out of position for him. Oh, I'm on fire. You're going to be burned to the ground in a second. Oh, oh it's not, it's not goaltending when I do it when I'm on fire, you see. It's not, not right. goaltending when I do it when not I'm on fire. Right. So keep that in mind, kids. Always goaltend when you're on fire, and go for those big threes, because holy shit, you can bury. When, the, um, when this version of the game first came out... Um, several of us in New York City traveled to the only arcade that had the a machine. The Broadway Arcade. And all four of us put in our quarters and put in Dan's code. So there was four Dan Amrick Four Dan Amrick heads. And only one of us knew how to play the damn game, so that was yeah, amusing. The Dan Amrick head that was scoring baskets was the one that, that was the real Dan Amrick. Uh, but yeah, we, we actually went there when it was on test with an earlier chipset before they had finalized the secret characters. So we all, like, trucked all the way up to the Broadway Arcade. What was, guys, it wasn't Steve Ritchie. Steve, I forget what his name was. Broadway might, Arcade was, was a, a very big deal, and it was where a lot of games went on test. In you might want to thank Coast. people before you... Oh, because we're, we're oh are, we, are we close to the end? Yeah, we okay. are. You may not see the end of this game, but trust me, I'm going to win. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, total thank you to Russ Pitts and Susan Arndt for yes. putting this together. Thanks for inviting us. Thanks to Jackie Collins for doing an amazing job scheduling. This is a 36-hour stream. This is ridiculous. A lot of, of planning went into this, and that's thanks to Jackie for keeping us... Uh, in in the uh, in the loop. Thank you to Paul Kerthois for the for the donation. Thank yeah, you to Pantless Steve. Steve for the donation as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in. It, bookmark this site because we'll do this again uh, for fun. God knows, uh, you know. There I'm, are plenty of uh, obscure, so many obscure, obscure games, games that, that uh, I know about that I know stupid stories about. Um, and you've you know, got some uh, on this channel on the uh, Amber. Well, I don't know what you're. I don't know. There's no. There's no. Uh, there's no replays. On oh, here. okay. Um, and thank you to Catcher and Alk for manning the chat yes. room. Thanks, and, uh, oh, and thank you for taking your your hands off the controls. That's <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, thank you for, for tuning in. Uh, I'm not sure who's up next. I'm sure that somebody in the chat room does know. Uh, really appreciate uh, being part of this, having an excuse to play some old arcade games, and hopefully bring a little and bit more awareness to take this as a great organization that, um, that I really honestly believe in. Hey, something. It is something. <laughs> it really is something, let me tell you. Well, no, uh, yeah, what, what Take This is doing is really, really, really impressive in a short amount of time and getting everybody together and all the people that have uh, streamed over this uh, 36 hours. So, uh, yeah, kick them a few bucks. Um, it's all going next. to very, very good uh, use. What'd you say, Cap? Bethesda is up next. Oh, Bethesda is up next. Awesome. I wonder who from Bethesda is going to be. Is Matt gonna... Grandstaff. Oh, oh, all right. Okay, Excellent. Matt, yeah. Yes. Okay, well, then stick around for that, for sure. Because, let's face it, you got nothing else to do today. If you're at work, you're not working. And if you're at home, you're just chilling on the couch anyway. Oh! oh! What was go, that? Go, Larry, go! Don't go! Oh, you son of a... Son of a Del Curry! Oh. At least I couldn't let you have that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh. oh. I don't have a lot of dunks. They did 
Uh, by the way, Kat vastly prefers the Avatar version of Dan Amrick, these 6'6 six, six rippling muscles. <laughs> here, you know what? Just come, come down here and, and, take, oh. and look at the camera here for a second. When we get the, when we get the ball back, we'll just come down. You can see the face. <laughs> I had these giant owl-like glasses. They made me send uh, sev uh, my my photo from several different uh, angles. That was the that was the thing. They're like, we need you at like straight on three quarter profile, and uh, like if you had fallen over. So I was supposed to look like surprised or something. Uh, I still have the individual photographs. Um, yeah, that's because when we did we did it, we had to do it. Yeah, I think it was on a disc out. camera or yeah. something wow. like that. It was, you know, we didn't have a lot. So yeah, there you go. Uh, impress your friends, confuse your enemies by putting an Amrick 2020 next time you play NBA we'll hang time or NBA maximum hang time. Right there. That, that's something to be Eight of ten very, rebounds. Very proud of. And yet you were the player of the game. Yeah, look oh. at that. 64% from the field, so great shooting percentage. Because I was feeding. Oh, nine assists. That's great. Feeding yeah. all to Del Curry. And uh, that counts as both a win and a loss for my character, which kind of sucks. So. <laughs> Sorry. Please notice I'm two and four as myself on the main machine. Yeah. I've won the championship on my main thing, so. In any case, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh, go have fun with Bethesda. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Oh. Best two out of three? <laughs> Get my ass kicked. Yeah, that was good. Yeah.